And it's like the same way we've never talked about how a payoff is determined. There have, have been, we? There have been theories. Well, I'll tell you the theory. Not the theory. This is the real deal. I've done it. What was the theory you had? Uh, say, say, okay, let's say, let's go back in the days of the territory. Okay. Let's go back to Memphis. Okay. And say the house was $10,000 and you had 14 guys on the card and a referee. Okay. How would you do that? Um, I'm trying to think of what you've said. So in the past, the champion or the headliners get a certain percentage, maybe half as much May- for the undercard, and then everybody else just gets whatever's left. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. That, I, 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 actually, I know, I've fo- got the answer. I've got the answer. It was talent really? a third, promoter a third, and running costs a third, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a book of thirds. Yeah. The promotion gets a third, and so they get $3,300. That's what the promotion has made, just for itself. And the cost of running the show, the publicity, is should be a third. That's another 3300 And the talent gets a third. So they get $3,300. So if you divide, divide 14 into $3,300. Uh. Hang on. Do I have to pause this now while I do it? Well, it's, hang on. It's it's just it's just it's maybe like two seventy two eighty dollars something like that. Okay, say three hundred. You oh uh, no, I'm wrong. Uh, two hundred thirty five. Okay, two hundred thirty five dollars. So if you paid everybody on that card the same thing, everybody would make two hundred and say forty dollars. So. Now, back in nineteen in in the eighties, two hundred forty dollars is not bad. Uh, but you wouldn't pay your main event two forty. You'd probably pay them maybe five hundred, six hundred, and then of course whatever that how many you got there. And I say the lowest payoff on that card would be one hundred fifty dollars. Main event getting six hundred, but it would come out at thirty three hundred dollars, and then the referee they would work him in there somewhere you get like a hundred bucks or something but but who knows that's that's how they do it mm-hmm. because when somebody say a promoter sees thirty three hundred dollars and he goes hmm the talent they don't know what the house was they didn't count the money they didn't count the tickets so I'm gonna knock it down to twenty five hundred so I'm going to take 800 off the top because they get first count. I'll take 800 and then I'll pay them off from that. Because what's the town like got to argue about? Nothing. Cause they don't see any figures. Those are hidden. And that was the, really the, the big concern all these years with, they were getting screwed on the payoffs and possibly they were. Because they didn't know the office that week bought them a new, some more new typewriters or some more scanners or the guy bought, he had to fix his car or what. But the office and the management, they get first count and the, uh, the talent either had to accept that or just be pissed off and move on. Now, there were a few good guy, good guys who paid well in the business. And it was in Houston, Texas, was probably one of the best. Paul Bosch. I worked a match there one time. I got six hundred or seven hundred dollars in the second match. I went, what the hell? I thought they'd made a mistake. I didn't say anything about it, but I'd never had a payoff to be that low on the card before. But I mean they had a they had a sellout, a big house. But $700, listen, you go back in the dressing room and put your wrestling stuff on and put your boots on and talk to your opponent, who you hope doesn't hurt you, and you walk out there and you spend, and from the, from the time you walk out of that dressing room door, you walk back in that door, might be 20 minutes. But that's going to the ring, getting introduced, coming back, Say it's a 15-minute match, but 
to get seven hundred dollars for that for fifteen minutes, and you weren't you didn't have nothing to do with drawing the house. You would just own the card. That's a great payoff. Was it was it because he was selling out the houses consistently, or did he charge more for tickets? Or who's that? Paul Bosch. So he paid. He paid as he was supposed to pay. Hmm. He he paid the the third the the world of thirds uh, the story of thirds, and he took his third, which is on a hundred thousand dollar house back in those days. That's thirty. That's thirty three thousand dollars he would make for himself. So he didn't probably need to take any more money from the wrestlers. He could have, mm -hmm. and the promotion made thirty three thousand dollars, which is him. So he's made his money. So he and he shared the money. So you could actually work in Texas and be starving to death on the other towns, but make your whole week in Houston. You really worked to be on the Houston car because his cars did well and his big shows would probably do they'd probably do a hundred thousand, maybe back even back then. But maybe not that much. But they were they he was a good payoff guy. Let me ask you. I don't know if I'm ruining someone's question for you know the next episode, but of the top three, I'm assuming Paul Houston, uh, Paul Houston, Paul Bosch is in there. Uh, the top three best payoff men that you ever uh, worked for, not including like Vince in the '90s and 2000s, maybe. Hey, Vince had his doubters too. Believe me. I'd say the number one AL guy was was Bosch that that I worked with. Uh, second one was Jim Barnett in Atlanta, but he started in like in Australia, and then he took over the Atlanta office. He paid well, and the and you won't hear this much, but during the time that I was in Puerto Rico, and I had that hot run. They paid off well then, too. I was just thinking the other day between Puerto Rico, and I worked three days in Puerto Rico, and they had another island. It was called Trinidad. I made in five a five-day run $4,400 in 1979. So what would that be today, you think? Oh, pause. Unpausing, I've found out the answer, and $4,400 in 1979 is worth 18431 today. All right. So you made so nearly 20000 in five days. In today's rates. Yeah. Well, that was, on, that, was, that was two territories. We were the main event. We sold out every show. But to make that much money, I mean, I mean, it was just a difference in money, not work, not time of the match. It was just what we got paid because that's what we produced. So, and and believe me, I've got some crappy payoffs in Puerto Rico too. But back in those days, they paid well, and and I, some people said, "Ah, oh, you didn't make that much money." I wish I had to save the check, but and that was it was actually two checks. So, but it actually wasn't even a check. Trinidad wasn't even a check. Trinidad was cash money, and you know how we got got our money in Trinidad. Go on. Well, Trinidad is they pay off in TT money, which is like monopoly money. You know what I mean? So if you go down there and say whatever I got there, I can't remember now. Say I got 5,000 TT money, which basically back in, in dollars, it'd be like 2,000 U.S. dollars. But you wouldn't get that. They would they would just screw you around. You, you might get $1,300 if you did it there. This is what I did. To keep from losing a dime on the money, I would go to the American uh, airline office, and I'd say, I want a round trip ticket to Los Angeles and back from San Juan. 
They say, okay. And they figure up my money. And if it was just close to what I had to cash in, I'd get the ticket. And it was a, a Y ticket, means fully refundable. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it meant. And I would take that ticket back to Puerto Rico with me, and I would sit on it about a week. And then the week that I wasn't in Trinidad, two weeks later, I would go down to the American Airline office, and I said, I'm not going to use this ticket. Can I get it refunded? They said, okay. And they would refund me every penny of it. And I'd get like whatever the ticket was, $1,800. And they'd write me a check right there. They send me a check later, but I didn't lose any money on it. See, because a lot of guys would go down there and they'd have TT money. Well, TT money going back to Puerto Rico, people would laugh at you. Like, what is this? It's monopoly money. And it wasn't worth anything to anybody on the street unless you took it to the international bank. And then you'd have trouble there. But guys would lose money. Say they would make $2,000 or say they make $1,000. If they cash it in, they might get three fifty dollars for it. Because I don't know, it was, it was screwed up. But I, I, didn't, I didn't mess with it because I would just go to the American Airlines because they have what they call bookkeeping and accounting. <laughs> so, and I would get all my money back. So. And I didn't tell any of the other wrestlers that. Because you know why? Because that's the surefire way to ruin something is to let all the other no, wrestlers. No, no, <laughs> kidding. Let, let the other wrestlers know, and I'll be damned, it will get screwed up. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you can't even do it anymore. So I didn't tell anybody, and everybody else was complaining about it. And I'm going to say, well, okay, I'll just, I'll just take it as it comes. So crazy, huh? Crazy.